And yeah, yeah, you can go ahead. I'll, I'll change my name, put MD, so he knows it's, uh, let okay. me edit the name. And if need be, you know, I'll intervene. If no need, you know, depending on how the focus shifts here. And, okay. Sure. Hey, can you guys hear me clearly? Yes. Okay, just making sure. Yeah, you drive here. I'm just getting on in case because he's a IT and uh, he's a IT director, so. Okay, guys. Okay. Okay, and Paul Clayton, Glasgow. And let me see if we got a phone number for him. Okay, he didn't. Thank you, Paul has joined us. Paul? Okay. Let's see he's down on Paul? Hello? Hello? Yes. Paul, Paul good, uh, uh, good afternoon. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing fine, thanks. Good, good. Well, thanks a lot for joining us today. Uh, are you um, alone, or is there anyone joining you? I'm alone. I'm having a very hard time hearing. It's coming through about three times. Okay. I opened up the, you know, the equivalent of an OCS, the online meeting, and I don't know why I can't see anything or hear you guys. Huh. Um, okay. So you can't see the screen. Um, I, I've got. Uh, I, can see our, the, I can. I can see the screen. Okay. But I mean, normally these would just come up, and I can hear you. Huh. I'm not on mute or anything. I mean, it's it should work, but anyway. Okay. Uh, can you hear me okay? I can. Okay. Got I, it. I, dial, I dialed in. Okay, got it. You can, you can hear via the computer. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, I've got, uh, Paul, let me introduce uh, who's with me online. Um, I've got um, one of our advisors is actually a physician. Um, his, his name is Dr. Haddad, and uh, he's online just to... Case, especially with um, pharmaceutical companies, if there are any questions that come up related to regulatory issues, um, you know, he's always a great resource for us. 
Um, and I've also got uh, Patrick, who's one of our uh, senior technical people. So with that being said, um, not sure if you had a, a chance to review the website, but um, before we do that, we always like to know a little about um, who we're talking to. Um, obviously, Smith Klein is uh, pretty pretty straightforward in terms of what you do, but maybe you can spend a minute and talk about um, your experience with web analytic tools and what what you're all using currently. Well, I'm not going to go through what we normally use or what okay. we use here, but um, we have used web analyst tools for quite some time. Okay. Um, it depends which country we're in in the world, so we don't always use the same tool worldwide. Got it. Um, but we have been using them for quite a while. Okay. Got it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Well, let me start the real brief presentation, and then we'll answer some questions. Um, we are. Um, the innovators and inventors of a new technology, which essentially is uh, what we call a live customer interaction. their mouse movements, but we're also giving you uh, exactly what it looks like on their um, device. Um, one of the things we found is that um, usability is becoming more and more of an important issue, especially on mobile phones. And so to be able to have a very clear sense of what exactly the customers are seeing uh, is becoming more and more of a, an important um, uh, issue for uh, people that are putting a lot of large amounts of data and, and are um, trying to be uh, more productive with their websites. Um, so what would you actually look at? So give me a specific example. I okay. Mean, I can see it, and that's fine. But okay. so, it would so be helpful might, to know what you know what folks are putting in either their phone or their iPad okay. or their whatever. Okay. I mean, so in, in this case, uh, on, the, on, the, on the mobile phone, you can see that um, you know, someone's inputting uh, text right now. So mm -hmm. this, is giving, this is giving you exactly... Um, not only the text they typed in, but exactly how they did it. So if they typed in, you know, Bob went to and then misspelled it and went backwards and redid it again, or, um, you know, it's giving you literally every data point um, of that entire web experience. So you're, you're, you're getting uh, the total bird's eye view about everything they're doing. But that would only be for the web they're on. So you wouldn't have access to everyone's web. Uh, well, no, it would be, it would, when I say everyone's, it would be your website. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, so... Um, you're not intruding on their personal information, is my point. Uh, so, if they're, no. if they're, so if they're at on a GSK website, um, or if they're at a doctor's website or whatever, then you you would have access to that. But that's all. So um, you're, you're correct. Let me say that um, obviously all of our um, software is built in with all the the blocking um, protocols that you need. So obviously, you know, you're not going to want to store uh, or collect. Uh, you know, credit card information, social security numbers, and, and whatever you want to deem to be um, sensitive data, you you can block out and it won't record it. Okay. So um, on, on the one hand, obviously the data is important, but you know uh, we, we want to build this to be respectful to you know, different uh, industries and you know the sensitivities are involved in that. So now, obviously we're collecting a tremendous amount of data. The question now is what to do with the data. Well, typically what we do or customers do is take that data and tag and segment it. So in this case, um, you know, somebody's coming. Uh, so you're, I mean, obviously Glasgow Worldwide, I'm sure, involves a lot of different types of websites and a lot of different functionalities. But, you know, uh, it, it, um, I'm, maybe for the demonstration purposes here, maybe you could give me an example of a couple of website uh, websites and how your customers tend to use them. Well... <clears throat> I mean, the, it, it depends where the customer is. So in the U.S., I mean, a, a customer would use a, a GSK website to see whether there is uh, product availability. Okay. They would use a website to see if um, there are other products that have a similar nature that they could go talk to a doctor about, as an example. Okay. If it's okay. a prescription drug, um, okay. if it's a consumer drug, they wouldn't be doing that. They would, they would be looking at where it's maybe um, the closest to where they are okay. during the circumstances. Um, they may be traveling or they may be at home, but at least, you know, usually at home they, they wouldn't go on the web. They'd just go to their local um, drugstore or 
pharmacy or whatever. Okay. Um, but quite often it's used when people are moving, traveling, vacationing, doing whatever, and are not sure where they can find things. Okay. Okay. So um, in this case, um, typically what um, the, the benefit to most of, of, uh, of our customers is looking for and really following um, high value customers or high value targets. So, you know, for example, let's say that you had, um, you know, um, people that are ordering product, um, you know, distribution folks or um, drug stores, whoever, whoever typically orders your product. Now, do, do they, can they transact that product online too, or do they typically just check on inventories and then send a PO into you, or how, how does that typically work? Um, again, it depends on the country. If you're in the okay. U.S., they can do it online. Okay, okay. Um, so in this case, just again, to, just for um, to kind of uh, flesh out an example, let's say that um, you know they're at the GK site and they're looking at uh, you know a cancer drug or something like that, and they want to order it. Um, this gives you the ability to target you know your high value folks that you know come to the site. They're looking at product to understand um, you know their behavior, to understand um, you know the circumstances where they may have looked at the product, may even start to fill it out, and maybe abandon it. Uh, abandonment typically, especially for transactional websites, is a huge issue. So, you know, understanding, uh, you know, people's process, how they got to the site, the steps they took to get to where, you know, they're ready to order product now, and where they're falling out of that process, uh, and or why they're abandoning it are, you know, huge. Um, you know, that's, that's immediately, obviously, from a business point of view, the low-hanging fruit, people that come to order product that don't. So in our case, every person that comes to the website is an individual session. So if you come, if you come to the website, um, you leave five minutes later, you come back, that's a separate session. And we have the ability to capture all those um, sessions in, in the, as individual um, files that can be reviewed. So you can, you, you can understand um, their process. You know, uh, so for example, let's say we want to tag everybody that came to the site to order product that abandoned the process. You know, you want to go. You might want to go through the, some of the videos or generate an analytic from it, so that you understand um, what's going on. Are they banning the process because um, you know maybe To be out of your website. Uh, any questions yeah, but, on that? But, well, sure. Please. In, in fairness, I mean, if if I'm ordering a laptop or I'm ordering a phone or I'm ordering something that's available to anybody and anybody can order it, I can understand mm -hmm. what you just said, and that made a ton of sense. Okay. But I mean, we're talking about products that you know, nor I can't go and order a cancer-saving product for me. I have mm -hmm. to go to a doctor, yep. and they and they either give me a prescription. Um, or sometimes they would put it in electronically. Um, okay. Now, if now if they're giving me, I'm just using an example. If they're giving sure. me 12 scripts, um, so say you know one per month for 12 months, just to use okay. that as an example. Okay. The, do the doctor can put through that, and then I can go online post the time that they've give they've said it's okay for me to get it. A um, and I can go in every month after that and order it online and have it delivered to my house or have it delivered to a pharmacy or whatever. Depends what the product okay. is. Okay. Okay. So that that's a little different than if I'm, you know, buying a chocolate bar from Walmart. Got it. And in in, in fairness to you, that's correct. Um, the the point is of these videos is is just to be able to capture specific uh, segments that are important to you that you want to understand their behavior and any of the reasons why. Um, your website not, might not be allowing people to complete whatever transaction that they're undertaking and that you want them to complete. So um, if, you know, whether that's putting script in or, or even, you know, even from an in informational point of view, I mean, there are you know, people that, that keep conversion or I'm trying to understand conversions even if it's not any in a transaction but more the flow of the process, right? Are people, how are people responding to your site? Is it, it, are they getting the kind of information they need? Um, one of the issues with a, a medical center that we had recently was their, their sites are purely informational, but one of the, the, the 
some of the feedback that they felt like they were getting from people was um, our site is um, is cumbersome. You know, we're not able to get where we need to go. You know, people seem to be frustrated. Um, so usability is really, really important, um, and that seems to be one of the more driving terminology I think amongst uh, you know web people is how do we make our site more usable? How do we make it better? How do we make it flow better? How do we how do we better understand the way people traverse over our site? You know, a, a, a website's like a piece of real estate. You know, you 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 want to have people flow through your home in a certain way that's you know more productive, and um, you know it's more beneficial to both you as a site provider and them as a customer or as a, as someone that's in the informational mode. All right. So yeah. So that that that's the, that's the purpose of it. Obviously, not everybody is necessarily buying a chocolate bar, but there are different modalities of that. But in the end understanding their processes and you know, getting your site to be more productive is obviously a, you know something that people are getting more and more involved in um, you know this this may or may not apply to you but uh, again this is part of our technology we have a live component so you know uh, you have the ability to see what people are doing in real time live on your site um, and for you know folks again that um, either have high value folks online uh, that they want to uh, maybe communicate with via live chat. If you had maybe um, someone that was in a certain area of the site that you wanted to, uh, that was you you deemed as high value, or you know something that was really important. Maybe you wanted to communicate with people that had real specific questions about cancer drugs or certain things like that. This is your uh, this is your ability to, to you know tag those people, target them, and, and either chat with them live or have a drop down screen to you know communicate with them. You know where they can get the product from or any any late information that might be relevant, um, especially maybe certain segments of people. It's basically, again, another way to um, be able to interact with people in real time. Okay. Um, here, next I'm going to, uh, and just as a sidebar here, let me move this out of the way. Um, one of the issues, obviously, with handhelds these days, too, is the, you know, the ability to understand to, um, you know, finger movements. So we've got that ability now. That's a emerging technology and something that's very important, but this Gives you a sense that we can track um, we can track um, all the movements too, in addition to to mouse and and keystroke movements. James, if you can please refresh the screen there to show sure. the point. Sure, hang on one second. Yeah, let me do that. So this just gives you a sense. You get a sense of you know again how they're traversing. Via finger movements over your over their mobile, and you know this is a brand new technology, one that's going to become more and more important as again as people um, as people um, switch more and more of their um, data collection to mobile phones. Mm -hmm. Here is um, our um, our analytic tool. Um, we um, have the ability to when I say customize it, there's so much data that's available via our data collection. And let me just say this. Because we're able, and this may sound like you're kind of a crude analogy, but um, you know, if if someone comes in an apartment and you know they're breaking in and uh, you've got a motion detector, you get a sense of what rooms they were in um, and you're able to collect that data when they left. If you've got a video recording, you've got an immense more amount of data. You know, what shoes they were wearing, what color hat they were wearing, etc. Our ability to capture via data point all of um, you know the customers movements, interactions, keystrokes, uh, yields a tremendous amount of data for us. So we have the ability to basically to, to categorize that for you, tag it, segment it, and uh, via our engines, um, you know, develop whatever type of analytics you want. So this, while this screen represents sort of the kind of standard um, um, analytic tools that people want, we have the ability to give you exactly what you want via this, this screen as a way of you know, having a simple snapshot of the type of transactional or, or analytic uh, numbers that you that, you know you deem important. I mean, so for obviously, just for argument's sake, on this, obviously we've got you know a change in uh, customer traffic, um, uh, you know, amount of time people spend on the site, bounce rates. Um, you know, this is important distinction: the amount of mobile versus desktops, social research. You know, people they complete forms, traffic site breakdowns, um, social references. Um, website, you know, um, traffic, be it day, week, monthly, uh, you know, entry domains, how they got there, be it what type of engine, key search words, search engines, etc. But uh, again, we, we, you know, this is our standard screen, but we can 
you know, if you wanted to have a screen, you know, based on how many, you know, people went to this specific page and, you know, clicked on this link a certain number of times, you know, we, that can be part of this, this screen also. So um, we're able to customize however you'd like. Um, conversion funnels, um, I don't know if you all are using those, but um, that's becoming um, a, um, a really more and more important process of really understanding uh, your web traffic. So obviously, you know, in, in your case, um, you know, maybe somebody comes to the home page, they look at the research page, uh, the partnership page, and, you know, if there's either a form to fill out or, um, you know, they can join Facebook or Twitter or, or however, you, whatever that flow, that process is, the key in the end is to understand, you know, this is the starting point, this is where we, we want them to end up, and, um, you know, here are the steps in between so that we can understand where people are falling out of the process. You know, if you've got um, uh, people, you know, there to research type of cancer drugs, you know, with the with the end result being that you know they're going to click more information or um, um, you know contact you or whatever whatever those steps are, you um, you have the ability to you know understand where in that process they're falling out or, or what their behavior is as they go through that process. So you know maybe it's step two part of that process. You know, people tend to maybe go to the second page about cancer research and they quit reading about it or they, they, they don't continue on that process. It gives you the data and the information to be able to make changes. So again, we're back to making the site more usable, giving people what they want so that the ultimate point is that they're going to go to their doctor and, and request the drugs that you want or, um, you know, make more inquiries. But again, getting data they need so that they can um, continue down the path that you like them to. Okay. So um, that is that is in essence sort of just you know we always initially just do a brief overview um, you know obviously in a first call um, uh, we don't want to try to go too deep but we just want to give you an overview of some of the site functionalities one one last tool that we have that um, that might be of interest here do I have it up uh, yes okay so I actually had James there's uh, just one point I think a pretty big, pretty big point here was missed Paul on these uh, when we're discussing these data capabilities. Um, the point here is if someone was on your site in the example you cited as a patient uh, filling out the information on a website. If the patient wrote the word help on a specific text form, we would be able to create, create that as an individual metric to be stored every time just like a normal metric such as page views, etc. If a patient struggled for 20 seconds on the corner of your site, on a macro-based level, we would be able to tag and segment all of the similar sessions to create a key point indicator and customer dissatisfaction to achieve the objective that you had outlined. It's okay. not just about profit. So the point in your case, the end goal would be to reduce the time for servicing resolution. So let's reduce the time it takes for a customer to fulfill the action you would reference by 5% in each instance, which obviously with companies that are talking big numbers can have a very significant effect on the bottom line. So those were just when we were talking about the data reference. The point is your KPIs are going to be different per company. We have a much deeper uh, microscope and much more precise engine to define those to more depth and detail than just what happens on a page pen to page transition. I just wanted to clarify those points. I don't think, in case there was uh, some confusion. No, that was good. That was a good way to explain it. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Yeah, I, I would like to add one more feature. Uh, this is Dr. Adab here talking. Just want to say, you know, we understand for pharmaceutical companies, your customers are not necessarily only patients who are uh, ordering medications or seeking information. Of course they can do that, but your customers are also pharmacies and doctors like myself, as well as hospitals or, you know, partners, uh, centers, uh, healthcare centers, etc., health department. And lots of time, of course, they access like I do. For example, they access pharmaceutical uh, websites to try to find information about new drugs or find about any publications about drug resources, etc., or try to call uh, representatives and, you know, features like that. And all that, you know, I look at it as the recording part, for example, as if it was a black box. So you have black box that is used for aviation. So you have an exact record that you can refer to to document the fact that, you know, this was on the website, this is what that individual or or what, uh, you know, that organization was able to look at and what kind of uh, interaction they had. So if I went as a physician 
on your website, for example, and was looking for side effects of, uh, uh, you know, diabetic medication or asthma medication, etc., and and I encounter difficulties or uh, misunderstood, you know, what was implicated. No, in pharmaceutical industries and research, etc. This is and in healthcare in general. This is one of the main important features that we have. So go ahead, uh, Pat or James. So, um, what part of our feature set? We really there are two parallel products. One was the live customer interaction requires, and also is our digital competitive intelligence platform. So in essence, um, as you can see kind of from the screen there, uh, just like this screen I showed you earlier, it's basically a great dashboard for understanding what your uh, competition's doing. So um, uh, so it's basically a dashboard like this. And in, in the dashboard is going to provide you with, um, with um, competitive numbers as far as competitors' traffic. Um, changes um, to the website via you know keywords key phrases um, content um, it's going to give you um, the breakdown of so you know social but social references you know to people come via Facebook or LinkedIn or you know any any reference site um, it's basically going to give you a very nice uh, simple uh, dashboard that you can list all your competition and really get a quick overview on uh, you know what um, site traffic and, and relevant information that's going on to help you, um, you know, stay abreast of what they're doing and obviously be able to translate that into you know, information for your site. James, can you please go to the home page there to explain this sure. clear? I think uh, sure. the example, that nothing's readable from this view. Please go to the home page. Yeah, I apologize, Paul. This is going to make a lot more sense. Move down to the middle, please, okay. of the home page. Okay. And activate the link that actually shows a sample deliverable. On the left, right there under 360 view, up, okay. left. Now left, please, James, right there. To the left of where you are, there's a chart. Okay. Right, right there. there. Click there. Okay. Okay, great. So How would you mind... Yeah. If I, if I took another um, shot at that, if you don't mind to clarify, I know you had a couple questions, Paul. Was um, The premise of this is, in this example, you would highlight three key competitors. We would be monitoring traffic rank and updating this on a weekly basis. Um, we would be monitoring traffic rank based on a couple external mainstream resources when it comes to Internet research who have pretty, uh, pretty close estimates based on the traffic of your competitors. If you had a competitor with a 40% increase in traffic in the last month, we would also be storing the changes in source code, such as if they had 500 more Facebook likes this last month, if they had a change in headlines, and you'd understand the correlations between um, creating the traffic, why it happened, and what changes were made on your competitor's end. That's what this chart was here to, uh, I, I suppose, to uh, demonstrate. On the yeah, bottom, but the, the, go ahead. I understand that. The question I would have, though, is, I mean, if, if you folks got all of our data, you're going to show our data to the competitors as well. Yeah, the big, uh, the big answer there is we're not actually tracking this data. This, this is a lot different than our analytics product. Um, what we're doing here is we're doing the same thing as Google does, essentially, where, yes, we are storing the home page of every website on the Internet, yours as well. We don't have any specific information for the activity that's happening on the website. So if you were a client that has, this is completely mutually exclusive from what we're showing from this dashboard. We're storing information the same way Google does in a much larger website index than they have, and then correlating the changes made on their site the same way that if you guys changed a headline from cow to pig on your homepage, Google would reflect that keyword change as well when you searched. So that's what we're doing. It's not intrusive. It's not showing what customer activity. It's just showing um, what's happening on your website from a public domain. So we're not digging as deep as the analytics portion. Okay, okay. That's good. Thanks. 
That makes, yeah, I hope so. That's uh, what we hear from a lot of, when we're doing both of these angles and we reference doing things for every site on the internet versus recordings, it's completely different products. So. On that note as well, the industry on the bottom left, um, the premise here of industry, you know, usual deliverable for an enterprise such as uh, yourself, you would highlight your key competitors, you would also define your industry. Let's say you said my competitors are websites. using technology on their website on a macro level basis. Um, that's that's the, you know, the benefit of the industry page to say, hey, people are using this new XYZ technology in my industry that came out a year ago. I have automated awareness to not be left in the dark and stay, you know, stay, stay ahead of my competition and also benchmark in situations such as page load speed, benchmark how I compare to my competition to make sure we're doing things correctly. So it's all about having a step one, the step two, three, your time is digging deeper within your organization. Okay. A couple of questions, if you don't mind. Please. Um, multiple languages? Yes. So how many? Um, as far as I know, we have a translation mechanism that goes, we've went, I might have to get back on you firmly. As far as I know, we have at least 10 to 20, I would say, the most uh, mainstream, but I can't, I can't verify without digging deeper about how many more than that? So okay, no, that's fine. I mean, you've got more than one, and, you, and it's more than two. So I mean, you're okay. You're, you're, <laughs> that's you're, getting, a... you're getting well when you're a global organization like we are. We need to have multiple languages. So that's why the question. The other thing is, if someone was to go implement this, um, two parts to it. One is how long would it take, and B, how much? Well, part they're a. Obvious, they're obvious two, obvious two things I should ask. So. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> so, so. Yeah, so um, from an implementation, our for a normal size, uh, our minimum implementation time is three weeks. Our maximum time is nine weeks. That's usually the window you're looking at where the protocol on our end would be. You would add a piece of code to your site. From there, we would have to customize the video display and make sure everything, um, basically do Q&A analysis to make sure everything is is showing up properly. So it's from a price months. Correct. Yeah, to, to keep it really simple. One to two months. Nine week is the most we would yeah. know, so I'd say. Then that's, of course, after, in your case, we would have to sign NDAs both ways. We would uh, we would need to do a few, um, have a couple chats before we begin that period as well. So. No, I, I understand. I just said if, if we decide to go and everything's signed and you know what you need to do and we know what we want, then we're still talking a month or two. Yes, correct. Okay. Um, pr pricing, the big cost is variable based on website traffic. A ballpark there would be $5,000 for a million page views per month. So it's based on variable website traffic because our hard cost is the amount of data records stored. Right. Aside, aside from that, we have a setup cost, which usually um, is between 30 to 40 hours at a 215 hour rate. And um, to be perfectly honest, for you, your company is going to probably want more specifications than the norm. We have the in-house capabilities, such as if you wanted your visual data records integrated with a few different dashboards you're already using, that's going to add on to that number. But 30 to 40 is the norm on setup time, and that's usually once we're set up, you really don't need much maintenance internally. Okay. All right. Okay. Any, any other questions? No, no other questions. I mean, it's um, <clears throat> it certainly is of interest, a, and I think you know you're certainly I would suggest slightly ahead of the curve, if not more ahead of the curve than some, which is great, okay. I think for you and and potentially for us. Um, what would be best? Because um, this is much more um, linked to the end customer, and much more linked to, um, well. I would say our commercial business as opposed to our manufacturing business. Okay. Um, I know there are links back and forth in between the two, but this is much more attuned on the commercial side. So it would be helpful for me to have, you know, I'm a simple presentation guy. If you can send me like five, six, maximum seven slides, um, 
with a couple of names, contact information via email. Um, it would be helpful to put the timelines, just again, one to two months is fine. Put in And the rough estimation of cost, you can say it will be more than and it will likely be less than. You know, just make round numbers. Okay. What I will do then is communicate that um, to some of the senior commercial people. Um, and I would communicate it to them first just saying we've had a chat. I'll reinforce that I think it's important that they look at the email and then they would likely contact you directly um, if there's an interest. Okay. I would say realistically, I'm being honest, realistically, um, because this is obviously the beginning of a new year, um, folks are pretty slammed right about now until realistically about the end of February, it might be middle of March. Okay. So you may not hear back from anybody for a month. Okay. Okay. So a um, co couple questions then. So you, um, just understand your internal process. So you you work with um, some other players in different groups. Um, you would send this into a lot to them, and we'd hear back from them within you know probably two to four weeks. It sounds like. Yeah, you would um, hear back. You would hear back from them rather than me. I would suspect okay. Um, okay. because I'm more. I'm a senior person on the on the manufacturing side of the business. Okay. Um, but but deal directly with the commercial side on a regular basis. Okay. Okay. Um, one one sidebar question, which is obviously with very large organizations, there are people that represent different business units, etc. Um, is you, is your gaze into all the different business units, or um, is it strictly manufacturing? In other words, would there be some other people we should consider engaging with in different business units, or um, we don't want to be repetitive if, if you cover all the primary folks, but uh, maybe you can give us some guidance on that. Yeah, I I mean, I would leave me as a single point of contact till they get okay. hold of you directly. Okay. What, what, what I commit to you is I will send it to the senior commercial people. Got it. I know, I know them all, so okay. it's fine. Um, okay. And I would also send it to probably not one, but two senior IT people, okay. um, since they're heavily engaged in what we need to do to move forward, okay. which is obvious. Um, I will do that. Okay. And then lastly, the, 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 the process itself is um, we, we engage with these people and then um, um, do they each sort of have their own, you know, fight them to pull the trigger or is that, does it all come back as a group to you and, and, and a team or how does the, the process of, of um, uh, how does that kind of process work? Well, again, when they get into the details of which countries could, could utilize this, I mean, again, it'll come down to language. Okay. Um, if if the timelines to implement are roughly the same regardless of the language and if this cost is going to be roughly the same then it would it might come back as one as one thing okay. um, if it's going to be I mean, we have five major regions globally okay so okay. the most it would be is five but I expect normally um, we would combine the Americas normally with Europe so they they would be combined into one um, the Asia Pac area might be a separate unit. It might. I'm not sure. We'd have to see. Um, and then they, they'd have discussions mainly around what we do in some of the the other areas, like like Africa, as an example, and Middle East. Okay. Okay. Well, um, on that note, hey, we really appreciate your time. Um, we'll get you um, we'll get you some links and slides and some info so you can pass it on to uh, your, your your people internally. Um, I guess if we don't hear back from anybody, say within three or four weeks, to circle back with you, would, would that be appropriate? That's that's fine. But in fairness, I would wait. Okay. You know, wait wait until the middle of March. Okay. And you know, I expect you will hear from one okay. or <laughs> you, more. You may hear from several. You know, that okay. might drive you nuts too. But um, okay. <laughs> well, we know how the game works. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Well, again, hey, really appreciate your time, and uh, we'll get some info to you, and um, have a great afternoon. Okay. You as well. Thanks very much. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Well, I think, I think this is the best uh, call we have had so far, in my opinion. I think this is a huge potential. This is an enterprise, global, multinational. What, and he, this guy understood what we are talking about. He realized immediately that this is something no one else has. 
and the drug companies are very, very competitive. So let's play it right, you know, this week, you know, I want, uh, like he said, simple uh, presentation, five, six pages, I'll work with Patrick. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're doing it today, that's yeah, right. Yeah, let's do it and clearly 